fine at thank you Vivian remembering that <laughs> uh at verse uh, 16 of chapter 13 uh, in Hebrews, um, it, it, there's a, it's interesting, there's a mention of sacrifice there. It says, through Jesus in verse 15, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. This is uh, the holy occupation uh, of worship. And as we talked about the last time, that worship is, is, is corporate when we gather on the Lord's day. And that, that that's a... It's a it's a sacred time uh, when we do that, and that. Uh, but worship is also a private thing. You could uh, we could worship the Lord day and night. Uh, Any time we come before the Lord in prayer, we uh, we're, we're worshiping and let us bring a sacrifice of praise for Him when we do. And then in verse sixteen it says, "And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased." There's been a lot of talk about sacrifice in the book of, uh, of Hebrews, uh, Christ being the perfect sacrifice, the end of the old covenant sacrifices. Uh, and so the, the, this whole sacrificial uh, motif uh, runs throughout the book. Um, and uh, he points out, of course, that the, the, the once for all sacrifice of Jesus has been made. There's no need to bring the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer uh, to worship anymore. <laughs> we don't have to do that. Uh, but um, uh, that doesn't mean that uh, we as Christians uh, don't have uh, sacrifices that we can offer. In addition to the sacrifice of praise, uh, do not neglect to do good and to share uh, what you have. Um, you know, um, it's another form of sacrificial offering. You know, uh, works of, of generosity and kindness and benevolence uh, should have always characterized the people of God. It was one of the things in the early church uh, uh, in, Ro in, in the days of Rome, the Roman Empire, uh, that uh, where the, uh, the, um, the, the, the church would take in uh, orphans uh, and babies uh, that were abandoned uh, during all of the, um, during the barbarian invasions of the Holocaust, you read uh, Augustine City of God, there's uh, quite a bit about that. Uh, but, uh, you know, even just because of all of the immorality uh, that was going on in Rome at that time, and they would adopt these children. And uh, I know a guy who founded an orphanage in, uh, in Haiti, uh, just that sort of thing. And, there's, you know, he's adopted several of the children, brought them over here, put them through college and everything else. Uh, and these, these are the kind of sacrifices of, of good works that have uh, characterized the people of God. Um, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared in advance for us to walk in them. One of the reasons God saves us, Paul makes clear there, is so that we can show forth the, the, the beautiful work of his salvation through our good works. Uh, I couldn't help but think of this. It talks about, you know, taking care of helping the poor uh, was Comida uh, uh, de Dios uh, that our brother Mike does down in the uh, in, uh, in, uh, Dominican Republic, uh, food from God. Uh, we've all seen the pictures of, uh, of, of boxes of, of foods taken to the, to the uh, people in the, in the community around there. And that's just a, uh, uh, an example we could that comes right home uh to us all and uh you know it's it's a sacrifice uh, uh an offering uh, to god a fragrant offering is uh that is that ascends to the to the heavenly throne um paul says uh that our acts of uh, of, of good work uh shouldn't be uh, are to be especially uh, to those of the church, but they're not necessarily confi confined uh, to those in the family of faith. Uh, Galatians 6, um, 9 through 10, let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. So, you know, our, our, our works of mercy uh, should uh, uh, be all-encompassing, uh, but we should uh, always make sure uh, to set aside 
that for uh, people who are, are of the community of faith. That's one of the reasons uh, this was such a great mission conference. We were given lots of, uh, lots of opportunity to do that. As we were saying before the class started, give give them a sewing machine and a and a bicycle, and they'll go start a church. You know, uh, I, I, what a what a beautiful uh, uh, testimony that is. And uh, heck, we you know we when we studied Ruth, uh, that this that uh, um, ethic of of providing for the poor uh, goes all the way back uh, to God's original design. And uh, and his law and uh, how uh, the the farmers were to, to leave the borders of their field unharvested, uh, so that the gleaners, uh, the the poorer, could come and 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 uh, provide for themselves from the edges of the field. And remember how Ruth and uh, and Naomi did that. David, uh, David Witt was careful to say that Singh in India and our and our women took upon themselves to. In regards to the, uh, the vision of providing sewing machines and bicycles and so forth, very plain to say this is not a humanitarian effort. These are equipping women who are who have given up everything for the sake of the gospel mm -hmm. and desire to be a witness and, and giving them a means to support themselves and their families because their husbands abandoned them because of their faith and be a witness. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Yeah, in a hostile environment and have influence that they wouldn't that they didn't have up to then to, for the gospel. So there's a difference of just you know fighting for the poor and equipping <laughs> equipping the saints in a way that they can be a light and and, and effectively share the gospel with others. Amen. Because you know the real riches uh, aren't ever uh, anything we can hold on to in this world, right? You know we all know that. You know. Um, um, the, the, the true riches are uh, uh, is is uh, that which we uh, receive from God uh, through Christ, and uh, um, you know, uh, Paul said, "I can be content in any circumstance, whether I have plenty or whether I have nothing." You know what? Uh, and uh, so, uh, the the real contentment uh, it does ever come from the worldly things, but uh, the, the, those can be tools. Uh, the guy can use him. He's saying in Venezuela. I mean, the church pastor, pastor, pastor of the church. He doesn't even have a Bible. I mean, you know, to get to get a Bible to him is is not just a, a humanitarian thing. No, it is to allow him to equip his entire congregation and to mentor them and to uh, disciple them properly and and lead them to do the same. You know, um, it's, it, it used to be that. If the pastor had a Bible, he'd write it on a whiteboard, you know, verses on a whiteboard because you know, for his congregation. Now Russell says it's at the point where they don't even have paper. So the members of the congregation are forced to have to memorize the scriptures because they can't write them down. There's no notebooks. There's not even that's paper. That's interesting. That's, that's, what the, that's what the ancient Jews had to do. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know. You know, G Jesus, you didn't find him having a scroll when he quotes the prophet Isaiah. That's because he's committed to heart. When even yeah. Peter and, and James and John, all of them were close, they were they were working from the old oral tradition. Yeah. Beautiful thing. So, I mean, it's, it's terrible in one sense. I mean, but the fact of the matter is, is that people are forced to memorize. You write that word on your heart. Exactly. Uh, it stays there. <laughs> your your <laughs> word I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against sort of like you. The, <laughs> the, the emphasis of the navigators all these years in regards to scripture memorization is part of their... I, I've, I've still <laughs> got my navigator's cards. <laughs> they were a big part of my conversion. Uh, well, did you get any time to say something? Huh? Let's drop down to verse 18 and 19. Uh, pray for us, for we are sure we have a clear conscience, desiring to act honorably in all things. I urge you more earnestly to do this in order that I may be restored to you the sooner. Um, you know, this, this chapter, this last chapter of Hebrews has been about application you know a lot of new testament epistles are like that you get your long doctrinal section and then they'll say all right here's how you apply it and you know we've talked about uh, doing good uh, for the poor we've talked about uh, 
you know, let uh, love be genuine uh, uh, and so forth. But, you know, uh, one of the duties of, uh, of uh, and applications of, uh, of Christian doctrine uh, is prayer. Prayer is, a, is a, uh, our duty. Uh, uh, it's a privilege, but, uh, you know, there's nothing in the Bible that assumes that you're uh, not going to be praying, uh, you know, and it's, I don't know that it's really very possible to be in the will of God uh, if you're not uh, praying uh, regularly. Uh, and he says to pray for us, implying that he's part of a, a group, a missionary team, probably. Um, there's one more thing. That can, this is an area where you start to find some things that kind of lend a lot of credence to Paul's authorship of this, mm -hmm. uh, of this letter. But uh, let's let think about you know, the praying part of it uh, for a minute. Um, you just read a few things I found in the New Testament here. Uh, Jesus in Matthew 6. Uh, but when you pray, uh, I notice there's not an if you pray there. <laughs> when you pray, he also says when you fast, uh, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. Matthew 9, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest field. Yes, you know, when when Jesus taught the Lord's Prayer, uh, after hallowed be thy name, what was the first uh, uh, petition in that prayer? Thy kingdom come. Pray for the Lord of the harvest to send people out for, uh, and to do uh, the work of sharing the gospel. That, that, that should be at the top of, every, uh, of, of all of our prayer time. We should always begin with some kingdom prayer before we get into our uh, our. our our list of daily needs and our daily bread. Um, Luke 6, uh, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. Uh, these people here uh, have a lot of experience in that, uh, praying for those who abuse them. Uh, Jesus, uh, Luke 18, and Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. That's Luke 18, 1. Uh, Paul, uh, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Uh, 1 Timothy 2, 8, I desire then that in every place men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Uh, it's, um, it's a, uh, it is a blessed privilege. I mean, it's, a, it's an entering into the throne room of God. We've already been through that in the other parts of Hebrews. Uh, we have a great high priest, uh, our intercessor. Uh, who receives our prayers and presents them to the Father on our behalf, uh, and uh, as, as He is the sinless one, it allows us to, uh, as as sinners, to have come into His presence. Uh, we have that great privilege, and so uh, uh, we're in, it's incumbent upon us as as Christians uh, to use that and to use it often. Um, he talks about the clear conscience. Now, what do you think that's all about? Uh, desiring to act honorably in all things. Uh, it occurred to me that this man kind of views himself uh, as uh, Ezekiel did uh, in his prophecy, where he says he was a watchman. He was a watchman. Think of the, the all the harsh warnings if we've gone through the book of Hebrews. Uh, there's one in chapter 4, one in chapter 6, another in chapter 10, another in chapter 11. Very dire warnings. If you don't, if you fall away from the faith, this is what, where you're going. And, you know, you remember how Ezekiel said, son of man, I've made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them a warning from me. If I say to the wicked, oh, wicked, when you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his ways, that person shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. You remember how Paul said, you know, I'm innocent of the blood of all of you because I didn't shrink from declaring the whole counsel of God. And I think this is what he means about a clear conscience. You know, he probably senses that there's... These, these warnings kind of hit you, hit you in the face. They hit all of us in the face when we were studying them. Uh, but uh, the fact is, is that uh, uh, it's, uh, that's the responsibility uh, of the scriptures. Uh, they're, they're to teach, rebuke, 
correct and train us in righteousness according to uh, the first Timothy, second Timothy, uh, but to, to teach and rebuke us once in a while. The word of God will rebuke us from time to time. And uh, he, he felt that that was his duty to, to, to warn his congregation uh, about, uh, you know, returning to the old covenant worship to fall away uh, into unbelief and into uh, apostasy, uh, which was a problem uh, then, it's a problem now. Uh, mm -hmm. And we still deal with these things. Uh, and so as part of the applicability uh, of, this, uh, of this book, he asked uh, to, for uh, the prayer that he might uh, be restored to them all the sooner. Um, I mentioned about uh, the Paul's authorship. Uh, you know, obviously this guy is very concerned about his congregation, and I, I couldn't help but think of Paul uh, in um, in Second Corinthians eleven, where he says, uh, "He says in, I'm in in toil and hardship and sleepless nights and so forth, and apart from everything else, there is the daily pressure on me of my anxiety." for all the churches, his love for all those churches, his, his worry that uh, they would uh, they would stray from the path. And uh, I think this is at the heart uh, of, of any real and godly pastor. And I've, I've had that on, uh, I, I know Armando uh, urged us, uh, Pastor Armando urged us particularly to pray in that regard uh, for, uh, for Philip and for Dale, uh, because uh, he understood uh, the, uh, the the weight on 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 the heart of a pastor uh, when uh, he's concerned for uh, for the folks of his congregation, and uh, I think that's uh, what what the, this man is uh, is referring to here when he says, "I urge you the more earnestly to do this, that I may be restored to you all all that all the sooner." And um, so. Uh, and he says, I bear with my word of exhortation, uh, verse uh, uh, 22. Uh, you know, that's that's what we uh, were just talking about, those warnings, those words of exhortation. Uh, for I have written to you briefly. Uh, he may have written briefly, but it, it took me a long time to get through it. I have to admit. <laughs> <laughs> my exegesis was far from being brief, I must confess, but uh, uh, and then there's this, verse 23, you should all know that our brother Timothy has been released, with whom I shall see you if he comes soon. Greet all the leaders and the saints, those who come from Italy, send you greetings, grace and peace be with all of you. Um, the appeal to uh, bear with his word of exhortation is just what kind of what we were talking about. Uh, Paul says the same thing to the Corinthian church uh, uh, when he writes that uh uh, that reproving letter of, in First Corinthians, and of course the mention of, of Timothy uh, is a strong suggestion of, of Pauline authorship. Uh, although you know certainly many of the apostles and the uh, churches of uh, uh, in that day were, were familiar with Timothy. There's no question about that. Uh, but uh, he was uh, Paul described him as his son in the faith. Um, apparently Timothy had been imprisoned and it was, had been recently released. It's an unknown incident. We really don't have anything, uh, in the New Testament about that, but, uh, you know, that doesn't disprove it or anything. It just means we just, uh, that was what written down. Um, the mention of those who come from Italy, uh, the author is probably referring to the expulsion of the Jews from Rome by the Emperor Claudius in 52 AD. Um, Priscilla and Aquila, two of Paul's uh, uh, ministry partners, were, were thrown out of Rome for that, that very time uh, and joined up with him in, uh, in, in, in Corinth. Uh, and they uh, probably many Jews had to go seek sanctuary somewhere else. And wherever this congregation was, perhaps some of those refugees were, uh, were, were coming uh, to them. Uh, the timing would coincide because, as we've said, uh, it's clear that the, the worship of the old temple had not had not ceased yet, and so the the Jewish wars began in 66 A.D. and the temple was destroyed in 70 A.D. So uh, we have to figure it somewhere in that time frame between 52 and uh, 
and 60 uh, uh, AD. Um, uh, Mike, what did your translation say for, does it say Italy? Mm -hmm. and verse 24? Yes. Okay. It says Italy. Italy? Oh, mm -hmm. People don't hear Italy. It's right over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. What's a, I, it may appear. I can't know if it appears anywhere else. I can't. I can't be sure. That would speak to the to how far the the influence of the gospel is spread in that at, at that point, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Yeah. I said it would speak to the how the extent of the God the influence of the gospel, how far it is spread. Point this was written. Yeah. If Jesus was. Uh, uh, crucified and risen in 30 AD, 20 years time with no internet and no um, mass transportation or anything else, the gospel had already uh, gone all the way across the Mediterranean uh, into Italy. Um, and uh, we know that it went further than that, even into, uh, into at least into Spain um, uh, before uh, Paul's death. I saved until last, I kind of, jump shifted around there uh, the uh, benediction. I think this is one of those, uh, you know, the, at the conclusion of a number of, uh, uh, of letters, uh, there are these glorious benedictions, uh, the pronouncement of blessing. And um, I think this is a, a, a very beautiful one uh, in Hebrews 20, uh, thir 13 verses 20 and 21, Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. Now, May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 I can't think of a better way to close it than that. Uh, it, it covers it all. It, um, the God of Peace, El Shalom. I've never heard somebody say that foundation. No, I know. You know, where there's a. Uh, I've heard people use the one at the end of the Book of Jude, which is another good one. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and able to preserve you until the la you know, uh, that's that's a good one. Uh, but this is this is a very good one here. Um, can, I, can I suggest something? Sure. It, it occurred to me in regards to the fact that we got a newcomer today that's just coming into the very tail end of this, and this has been going on for so long. Um, you know, as far as our Friday morning men's groups, where we do very similar studies, that we oftentimes end with a recap. Yes. Of the entire book, just, you know, to finish it off. I think that'd be wonderful because uh, I really did want to kind of talk about that. Um, uh, and, you know, we having just gone through this, I don't know that we'll necessarily have time unless you give me another week to work on our job. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 won't, I won't complain. <laughs> Great idea, Mike. <laughs> you didn't say anything. <laughs> that was not pre-planned. <laughs> David, what does it say on our flyer? Did it start? <laughs> October 10th, 2021. <laughs> <laughs> Which means we have people following. And I can't make the panel. Exactly. It would, it would be it would really good. I hope. Okay. Well, I, I, I think so. Uh, you know, it, it's it, despite the way that I did it, it's not a long book. Not a long book. So, I mean, what, what, why don't I suggest that we all read it? Yeah, uh, it's 13 right. verse, 13 chapters. It's not long. I mean, you know, you could do a couple chapters a day and be through the entire thing by next uh, next week. And um, you know, not jot down something if you'd like. Make some notes if you care to. Uh, there, there's big headings uh, in all this. You know the, you know the opening to the book. Uh, In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, 
He has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he made the universe. The son is the exact is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he provided purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. That's a pretty auspicious beginning <laughs> to a book right there. Uh, and there are so many things, you know, the the, the high priesthood, the, uh, the Melchizedek priesthood, which... Uh, uh, um, Jesse and I have mulled many a time together over the priesthood of Melchizedek <laughs> and uh, the, the mystery of Melchizedek. Yeah, I see Jesse raising his hand. There. And, uh, the, uh, you know, then uh, the, uh, uh, like I said, there's a lot of subheadings in the book. Uh, sure. This, and this was something that was kind of said at the beginning when I was in, getting my theological training back in the study of Hebrew. And uh, and if you know, in regards to your suggestion to read, is to read with this thought in mind as you go ahead. Is this theme in Christ? We have a more excellent than this. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you know, the preeminence of Christ. You know, when you talk about angels, but Christ is far exceeds any you know angels or whatever. And and if you just start with that that thought. You know what is it he's saying in regards to the the, the preeminence of Christ over this preeminence of Christ over this great thought, like Christ. So if you kind of read, run through it with that thought in mind from the get go, you get a lot more out of it as far as seeing the conflict. Better than angels, better than Moses, better than uh, than the Levitical priesthood better sacrifice better covenant uh it goes on and on and on and on uh they uh, again a similar thing in the study of john yeah uh, i just love this prop how he just gets it and says he says when you go through john look for each i am yeah okay <laughs> the claims you know the claims of christ about himself all the way through you know, look in this chapter what's the i am and so you have to go there's seven of them <laughs> of course, yeah. when you when you want a, a significant biblical number, is it's always going to be seven, twelve, <laughs> <laughs> or twelve. Yeah, so that's a, that's a great suggestion. Everybody uh, on board with that idea? I'm sorry, I was uh, I was rereading the scripture. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I was studying over here. He's already, he's already doing it. <laughs> no, you know, no, just uh, that we have a do a, a, a recap of Hebrews next week, and I'd, I'd like everybody to to just read through the the thirteen chapters. And um, I think Mike's suggesting about uh, uh, the uh, price better than this, better than that, better than that, uh, which has been the motif really of of, of the author. Uh, uh, exegesis here uh, I think would be a great way to approach it and to, to bring those in and, and what, what 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 does it mean to you what does it mean Jesus we have now a, a greater high priest uh, than the sons of Aaron uh, one who lives always uh, he doesn't die like the high priest did in the old days he lives always to intercede for you uh, and uh, you know what does it mean uh, that uh, we have such a such a great high priest, uh, or or any of the other motifs that are uh, uh, a better sacrifice, uh, and um, I mean you know at least you don't have to bring bulls and goats to church every Sunday, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's a lot more to it than that. Witness slaughtered before your eyes. Yeah, Robbie. Yes. In my appendix, the key word is like Mike said, better or superior. But then it says other recurrent words and phrases, sat down, referring to Christ's finished work, heavenly calling, the priest, a gift, possessions, country, city, and let us. And it said those were all the key words of Hebrews. Well, that's great, Susan. Why don't you respond to our class email and uh, type those out for us? You mind doing that? No, I'll be glad to. Okay, that's a great idea. You know, the, the city and country thing is a big deal. He does bring that up several times. The session of Christ, that's what it means to be seated. 
you know, when you say court is in session, the judge sits down. They say, all right, you all get up. The judge sits down. Mm -hmm. Everybody else sits down. Court's in session. He's being seated. Christ is seated at the right hand of God the Father. What does that mean? That Christ uh, has, Christ's session has begun. Uh, you know, uh, he's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. These, these are magnificent uh, pictures of, uh, of, of our Lord Jesus, really. And that's, that's really why I wanted to do this book. Uh, it's it's one of the uh, fast, most fascinating portraits of Jesus uh, that we could find uh, find in the New Testament, I think. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. And if we'll prep, for our, prep a little bit for our uh, recap, we'll do that next week. Good, good idea, Mike. Thank you. And thank you for all the other suggestions as well. Uh, I'll send that out in the email and uh, it will be on the recording uh, uh, that goes out uh, nonetheless. Uh, anything else before we break up? Can you already got her email? Oh, she's been on my list for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is that Mara is new to uh, to things. It's just that she hasn't always been able to come up here. So maybe you've watched some of the videos over the years. And I, I would really, uh, if you think of some ideas, how I can brush those up a little bit. I do appreciate. I know. I know you're very skilled at that. <laughs> but uh, you know, she's been on the email list for a long time. And actually, when I think it went on when we did, we were doing the the online studies during COVID, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's great. You know, it uh, the this whole uh, live streaming thing has been a product of of uh, the pandemic, and it just <laughs> it just shows you, I guess, God can use all sorts of things uh, uh, for for His purposes. Uh, you know, it, uh, uh, I can't say that that the COVID was a good thing, but uh, you know, certainly uh, it. Uh, it, it we we found some uh, ways and means we didn't know we had before, and uh, exactly right. And they're still being used. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Still being used. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you're going if you're going to eleven, you got a good sermon from uh, Pastor Dale coming up. Okay. Yep. Yeah, Pastor Dale uh, kind of previews us a little bit on Wednesday morning. <laughs> we always get a little preview of the text <laughs> that's, that's coming up. and uh, um, But anyway, I've look, we'll look forward to that. And uh, as always, uh, you know, our, our fellowship uh, together, we it's a special time. And uh, glad to be here together on the Lord's Day, virtually or in person. <laughs> uh, let's, let's, let's close with, with prayer. Father. Uh, thank you for uh, the word that you've given us and that you would let us hide it in our hearts uh, uh, that we might not sin against you and that we might follow you uh, uh, and uh, and learn your, your word's instruction. Uh, it's reproof, it's correction, and the training that it gives us in righteousness and prepare the preparation it gives us for every good work. Uh, thank you for... Uh, um, the opportunity to, to, to fellowship and discuss this together uh, for the insights that your spirit uh, gives and uh, uh, for the uh, um, just the uh, the blessed love of Jesus for us uh, that binds us together in Christian love and uh, we we rejoice in that and uh, we uh, um, ask you to uh, bless our, our our time apart and bring us back together next Sunday in, in, in his holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hmm. Bye, ladies and gentlemen. Bye, Julianne. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Uh, my relative. Oh, yeah. Uh,